Hey everyone, it's been a minute. You see, I've been traveling and on set quite a bit, so my apologies if you haven't seen my mug in a while, but I'm back. And what a better way to be back than with the brand new Fujifilm X-H2S. Full disclosure, before I go any further, Fujifilm reached out to me a couple months ago asking me to shoot something with this camera. Now, it had nothing to do with my role here at Viztech, and they did give me a small budget, as well as I do get to keep the camera. Now, does this mean that the review will be all rosy and sycophantic? On the contrary. Now, Fujifilm, as always, have greenlit me to be as truthful as I wish about my experience. And like all my reviews, I'm gonna start by giving you all the things that I really do honestly love about this camera, and then all the things that were very challenging. What I can guarantee you is that for the very first time ever, I can say that I've had this camera longer than almost any reviewer. And I understand it better than any camera I've ever reviewed. All told, I've had this camera for, I would say, nearly two months. At the end of this video, you're gonna find a short video that I shot for Fujifilm with this camera. So you have some context for my experience with it. So enough idle chit chat, let's get into what I loved about this camera. Raw and log are great in just about any shooting situation in which you have some post-production resources. But they're most valuable when you have a wildly changing lighting conditions with little external control. F-Log2 has a nearly three stop improvement in highlight retention over the original F-Log. And let me tell you how much of a savior this was. Extra highlight headroom is also a tool that I use to help me get a cleaner image by overexposing and then pulling down in post. So having the extra headroom was great and the 14 plus stops of dynamic range of F-Log2 actually puts this camera closer to the realm of cinema cameras than many hybrid cameras. And the addition of both ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW is also another welcome addition, though truthfully, I didn't use it very much because I was either mostly content with F-Log2 or I just simply couldn't justify the file sizes. Fuji classically lagged behind Sony, Canon, and Nikon in their autofocus, but no more. I can confidently say that their AI is as good as basically all the other leading brands, save for the head recognition on Canon, which still kind of blows me away. Um, but in all other aspects, it's just as good as those brands. And on my dock, I really couldn't afford a focus puller, and frankly, I don't know how much use they would have been anyways. The AF on the X-H2S was spot on and whether I was on a wide or long lens, whether I was moving fast or doing slow tracking shots on a dolly, it was both a joy and a long awaited relief to finally have world-class autofocus on a Fujifilm camera. On to resolution. The camera is now capable of 6.2K in both raw and with internal codecs. It is however, three to aspect ratio, which is neither good nor bad, but if you want raw output to 16 by nine, then you have to choose the 4.8K raw variety. There is currently no 4.8K internal option, and not really a big deal because, hey, just shoot 6.2K and you get the added bonus of a reframe. Plus, 3.2 is also the classic ratio for open gate shooting, which is perfect for 35 millimeter two times anamorphic lenses, though there is currently no support internally for anamorphic at this time. So you will still need to de-squeeze through your monitor and in post. All this is to say, you're only getting a 6.2K resolution when you deliver a three to two aspect ratio video. Otherwise, you're really only getting 4.8K. I don't think this is an issue since the human eye can't resolve greater than 2K anyways. Moving on. I'm willing to bet that most users of this camera will likely be using laptops to edit their videos. And if that's the case, you likely struggle with H.265 regardless of it being either inter or intra frame. The X-H2S gives you the ability to shoot ProRes internally to a CF Express Type B card. Two notes on this, however. One, those cards can be a little bit more expensive than even the fastest SD cards. Thus, if you're hoping to use the SD cards you already have, you don't get access to ProRes. Second, with ProRes, you also have the ability to record ProRes proxy files. Now, I really wanna say yay, but my complaint to Fujifilm was ProRes doesn't need proxies. H265 needs it. So I never really use this feature because it's kind of pointless to me. Recently, we've seen a huge leap in the readout speed technology of cameras across the board. Now, for example, the a7S III slash FX3 does it very well because it's a very low resolution sensor. The Canon R5C also does it well, but it's a $7,000 camera and very large. But the X-Trans 5 stacked CMOS sensor performs even better and it delivers true versatility at half the price. Yes, it's an APS-C sensor, not full frame. But I would argue that in most video applications, 
this is not particularly relevant as we're still shooting a ton of Super 35 and no one's complaining. And if you really want the full frame look, you could easily add a Metabone speed booster. This all means that rolling shutter is reduced to a point that is not really perceivable to me. Now, maybe you'll find some elements of it if you pixel peep, but your audience shouldn't. And that lends the camera very, very well to handheld work, which is something that was difficult to do well on mirrorless cameras until very recently. For fans of IBIS, it is now up to seven stops, which I only really use when I'm holding the camera for slow or static shots. Though I did have it on from time to time with some of the action shots, and I was surprised at how few stabilization artifacts it produced. Overall, the camera never even got close to warm at any time in the two months that I had it. Now, for those who are shooting long takes at high frame rates of say 60 or 120 frames per second, I'm told that the camera may start to overheat eventually, or if you're shooting all day outside in the dead of summer. The solution to this is the additional fan. Now, of course, the downside, as you can see, is that once installed, you can no longer close the screen. My impression though, is that you really only need to buy the fan if you're planning on shooting 120p for very long periods, or if you shoot, as I mentioned, in very hot environments. For most shooters, I actually don't think you'll need it, but having it in your kit eh, wouldn't be the worst idea either. Overall, the build is one of my favorite features with Fujifilm cameras. They are very dust and water resistant, and there's no cheap plasticky bits. Overall, their cameras are always built rock solid and can take adequate abuse. One thing this camera does well that even the R5C couldn't do is a full HDMI 2.1 port. I also love that this camera isn't cluttered with buttons and you also have this really nice, beautiful GFX style LCD display up top. Photography isn't something I got a chance to do a lot of with this camera, but effectively this is the star of the show when it comes to the X-H2S. It's continuous shooting outpaces every other camera on the market except for the Micro Four Thirds OM-1 and only by a sliver. I have never made a secret that Fujifilm image processing has been among my favorites of any camera brand on the market. Yeah, it's 100% a personal bias, but it's a widely held belief among those who choose Fujifilm. I've always enjoyed their filmic picture styles and of course their skin tones. Okay, so moving on to what caused me some level of grief with this camera. Before I launch into it, two caveats. One is, some of these things may in fact change in future firmware, fingers crossed. Second is that I just have a way of working that's unique to me or the type of work that I do. So when I complain, it's very much based on this, how you work and how you use your equipment may and probably is completely different than how I do it. So to start, I wanna say that I generally have no photography related complaints with this camera. It is an outstanding photo camera for as far as I can tell. Now, I mostly use this camera for video purposes, which is why Fujifilm contacted me in the first place. So I can sum up my experience as saying, this camera is not really set up with a videographer or cinematographer in mind. And thus, here are the things I found annoying. This may seem trivial to the uninitiated, but there is no audible beep when starting or stopping recording. Now, this is a feature that is on all cinema cameras and most mirrorless. Without this, I'd often accidentally start rolling or accidentally not start recording at all. Now, there are some very small tally lights on the body, but there's only three and one is hidden under your thumb. One is in front and has to be manually turned on and the other is a very small blinking one on the screen. I begged Fujifilm to add a sound to recording for two months straight and at the last firmware I had, still didn't have this. So I've done my best. Unlike the Panasonic or Blackmagic cameras, the X-H2S has no scopes and no shutter angle. And the reason for this, according to Fujifilm, is that it's not as simple as just adding it. In fact, the brands who have these features have long ago invested in the R&D or stole it from their own cinema line, a line of products that Fujifilm has never had. So, Adding these features would have come at a much higher cost to the consumer, and for this camera's market, listen, it just simply didn't make any sense. But it doesn't mean that I don't want it. Now, a workaround for exposure tools, as always, is to use an external recorder or monitor, so all is not lost. 
One additional tool that I often use is focus peaking, and especially when I choose to go without a monitor, which becomes critical to getting focus off of a very tiny LCD screen. Now the camera does have peaking as with previous models, but my beef is that there's currently no way to assign peaking on and off with a function button or even a quick menu shortcut, which is a complete mystery to me for a function that you're often turning off and on. And while we're at it, you can add format to a custom menu, but they did however create a bit of a cheat code to get to it. So to do this, you go to playback and then you hold down the drive button and the down button on the D-pad at the same time and boom, there you have it. So not all is lost. The fact that the cooling fan does block the ability to close the monitor may irk some, but it actually doesn't really bother me. The trade-off for a built-in fan would have meant a much larger camera, something like the R5C, placing it out of the interest of photographers, which I think is the target market for this camera anyways, and would have likely added a significant cost to the camera. What does cause me some concern, though at the same time, I can't really imagine a fix for it, is that the terminal covers are these tiny little plastic pieces that just yearn to be lost. I don't really have a solution for this other than, um, don't lose them? Okay, so let's round up by addressing who I think this camera is for. I think that if you are a sports or wildlife photographer, I'd be hard pressed to think of a more resourceful camera, especially for the price. $3,200 Canadian for the body and $2,550 Canadian for the XF 150 to 600 millimeter lens is hard to beat. And even if we forget for a second that we're in a period of extreme global inflation. Now, the body is designed incredibly well for the working photographer with a nice deep grip and an intelligent layout. As a video camera, it's a bit more complicated. Certainly, you can get a Blackmagic Pocket 6K for less, but you wouldn't have an actual usable photo camera among other challenges like rolling shutter. So there'll always be trade-offs. And if I was to advocate for using the X-H2S for video, it would certainly be because of the dynamic range and the readout speed. Pound for pound, there's no camera on the market with video features that can achieve what the X-H2S does for anywhere near this price. In the same breath, there's a lot of core video functionality missing from this camera. While the video quality is among the best, video as a functional concept remains very much an afterthought for Fujifilm engineers, who I couldn't even convince to add a beep to the recording function. So for those who are dedicated Fujifilm users, they have just handed you their most powerful camera ever. And for those who are Fujifilm curious, be hard pressed to avoid the temptation in a perfect world this camera paired with a GFX camera would fill all of your imaging needs for a very long time. And that is it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for more videos like this and comment in the comment section below to feed the hungry algorithm monster. For me, for now, I'm out. Peace. One spark started the fire. When I won my first race, all I wanted was to keep winning. It fueled a fire in me. A fire to always push to be out front. Ben Cogman, absolutely rocking a whole shot for that. MPA3 with one hand on the bars. What a man, Ben Cogney, coming back at this photo on that 76 MPA group. That's all it takes sometimes. One golden moment in time to change your life forever. Wow, a man of many Kongs. Kong Manny. And it looks like Ben Kong Manny is getting the whole shot on the 96 KTM. Real one down there, just a scalded eight. Crushed the Empire State Building. Every race, every ride, is a fight between Earth and my machine. Where gravity can be my friend, or instant my foe. And you don't win races by following everyone else. You win them by taking the fastest line that no one else is looking at. Off my but bike, I'm, I'm dreaming about each turn, each, turn, each rut, rut, each jump. Where I'll play it safe, 
and where I'll go all out. When I step onto the track, I'm ready to pack away my fears and go as hard as I can. These moments are everything to me. On my bike, I answer to no one. But winning doesn't happen on the track. It starts at home. Without my sponsors, my coach, and my parents, I couldn't win. That first trophy was the spark. But they, they are my field.